Hi everyone, so let's solve our assignment. This is our assignment too. So I will show you the question. This is the first question. Here JN means junction area. Okay. This is the second one. This is the third one. Three questions are there. Fourth one, a division question. Then this is the fifth. Sixth question. Seventh. Eighth. And now we will have three similar kind of question. This is ninth one. Tenth. And eleventh. Okay. And one more question is there, I guess. Yeah. This is the final question. So you can attempt it on your own. Then you can check the solution one by one. Right. Let's move on to the first one. Okay. So there is one important thing that is whenever in any question they have given that uh, the d1 has 10 times area of 10 times the junction area of d2 in bjt you will see words like uh, the transistor are matched so whenever they use these terms that junction area is 10 times uh, transition are transistors are matched uh, or diodes are matched that means they are talking about reverse saturation current if uh, junction area of uh, d1 is 10 times that means reverse saturation current of uh, d1 will be 10 times so what I mean to say, reverse saturation current is proportional to junction area that I am writing as A. What they are saying, the junction area of D1 is 10 times of junction area of D2. That means A D2. That means reverse saturation current of D1 will be 10 times of reverse saturation current of D2. So tell me in D1 how much current is flowing? This 2 milliampere current will be flowing through D1, right? The same 2 milliampere current. And that too from P to N. That means D1 is on. Right? P to N 2 milliampere current is flowing. That means D1 is on. What about D2? Here 10 milliampere current is there and 2 milliampere current is going into the D1. 10, ampere, 10 milliampere current here, 2 milliampere current is going here. That means 8 milliampere current is coming in D2. Right? So what you can do? You can write the equation for I D1. I D1 is 2 milliampere. That is equals to I S1 e to the power V D1 by V T. Right? e to the power V D1. What, do, what we have studied? We have studied that diode current is I S e to the power E V D by V T. V D is, is for V D is forward bias voltage. Right? So what will be forward bias voltage? That will be V D1. So, ID1 would be 2 milliampere equals to IS1 e to the power VD1 by since they haven't given neta value, eta value that neta eta value, I will take that as equals to 1. Okay, so eta is 1. And what about ID2? ID2 will be 8 milliampere. ID2 is 8 milliampere and this potential will be VD2. Right? 8 milliampere equals to is2 e to the power vd2 by vt right what we need to find we need to find the value of v naught so what do you think what will be my v naught start from here 0 vd2 minus vd1 0 plus vd2 simple kvl i am applying minus vd1 is equals to v naught so your v naught is basically vd2 minus vd1 so my target is to find this difference vd2 minus vd1 that's it if I can find this difference, my problem will be solved. What did I see? That what will be my V0? V0 will be 0 plus VD2 minus VD1. So I just need to find the value of VD2 minus VD1. That's why I am doing all these things. So this is equation 1. This is equation 2. What do you think? How do how can I get VD2 minus VD1? If I divide equation 2 by 1, right? Divide the equation 2 by 1. Okay, I need to add a page. So, equation 2 is divided by 1. What do we get? 4 is equals to IS2 by IS1 e to the power VD2 minus VD1 by VT. Eta value we are taking as 1. 4 equals to IS2 by IS1. What is IS2 by IS1? IS2 by IS1. 1 by 10. Right? From here you can see 
वॉट इज आई एस टू बाई आई एस वन दैट इज वन बाई टेन वन बाई टेन इज इक्व टू ए टू दावर वॉट इज वी टी टू माइनस वी डी वन दैट इज वी टी सॉरी दैट इज वी नोट डिवाइडेड बाई एटा सो वी नोट विल बी वी टी इन टू एल एन फोर्टी दैट विल बी योर आंसर सो आई नीड टू बिंग द कैलकुलेटर आई विल टेक वी टी एज ट्वेंटी सिक्स मिली वोल्ट ट्वेंटी सिक्स एल एन फोर्टी मिली वोल्ट ऑल दो वी टी वैल्यू विल बी मैंशन इन द एग्जामिनेशन मोस्ट प्रोबेबली नाइनटी नाइन पॉइंट नाइन नाइन so i will bring the calculator yeah so after solving it we get nearly 96 millivolt right nearly 96 millivolt that's the final answer well and good let's move on to the next problem easy question it was we just needed to find v not value let's move on to this one you have to draw the v not waveform that you need to draw try it on try it on your own because we have studied jena diode so you can try it So tell me, what will happen? What what we do first? First we apply open circuit test, right? So what we will do? We will apply open circuit test. So here what you are having zero volt because this is R and the complete circuit is open circuited. So no current will be flowing through R. So zero volt will be here and here you will be having V in. This side is N. This side is P. Tell me one thing. What will happen if V in is less than zero? V in is less than zero. What will happen? Diode will be turned on. V in is less than zero. If V in is less than zero, that means Jenner diode will be in forward bias. So if the diode is Jenner or normal diode in forward bias, both acts act as same. Nothing is given. No V gamma value is given. Nothing R Z is given. Nothing is given. That means we will be shorting it. What I am saying. For V in less than zero, what will happen? The Jenner diode will go in forward bias. If it is in forward bias, it acts as a battery or short circuit. Battery resistance or short circuit. Now, since there is no V gamma value mentioned, there is no R R Z value mentioned. That means it it will simply be short circuited, right? So when V in is less than zero, diode is on. It will be short circuited. So what will be V not value? V not will simply be equals to V I, right? Now V I is greater than zero volt. If V I is greater than zero volt, what will happen? This Jenner will go into reverse bias first. Jenner will go into reverse bias, and to get it into breakdown region, how much voltage do you need? Six volt. So if V in is greater than six volt, greater than zero volt, but less than six volt, what will happen? diode will be reverse biased and not in breakdown the diode will be reverse biased and not in breakdown right because before 6 volt it will not go into breakdown region i hope you remember the jenner diode concept i hope you have studied it in forward bias it it acts as the same in forward bias same as the normal diode in reverse bias until it goes into saturation until it goes into breakdown region it remains the same and when it goes into breakdown region it gives a constant voltage right i hope you remember so now it is reverse bias but not in breakdown it's not in breakdown that means diode will be simply open circuited and if diode is open circuited what will happen v not will be zero volt right and when v in is greater than 6 volt what will happen diode goes into breakdown into breakdown then what will happen how will the circuit look like in breakdown region how it will look like this is v in this diode jenner will be replaced with the battery battery will have positive at n side and negative as p side and this will be 6 volt this will be r v not so what will be v not v not will be v in minus 6 well and good v not will be v in minus 6 so what do you think how will this waveform look like so there is a 
break in point at 6 volt we can say so we will draw 6 volt here that something different is happening here at 6 volt so when v in is greater than 0 and less than 6 volt that means v naught is 0 so this point v naught is 0 and when v in is less than 0 at that time it will follow the input right so for all these regions when v in is less than 6 volt v in is less than 6 volt and greater than 0 it will always be 0 0 it is here 0 here also it is 0 here also it is 0 here also it is 0 and for value v in greater than 6 volt what is happening value v in greater than 6 volt v naught is v in minus 6 right v in minus 6 what is this maximum amplitude this is 12 volt so v naught is v in minus 6 at 6 volt it will be 0 volt at 7 volt it will be 1 volt at 12 volt it will be 6 volt so from 0 to 6 it will rise it will go on like this are you getting my point at 6 volt when v in is 6 volt when v in is 6 volt, v naught will be 0. When v in is 7, v naught will be 1. When v in is 12, v naught will be 6. So from 0 to 6, it will go. So it will go on like this. And when negative sign is there, this will be 6. And when negative cycle is there, when v in is less than 0, that means v naught will follow the input. So it will follow the input. Then again, uh, this seems like a big gap, although the graph is not looking symmetric, but it should like symmetric. That this gap looks similar, smaller, this look, uh, this gap looks bigger, but uh, this is just in diagram. I hope you are getting the concept. Both gap will be the same. This will be 6 volt. This will be 12 volt actually, minus 12 I would say, minus 12 volt, because it is following the input. And then it goes on as the same. This will be our output waveform. So these kind of questions are asked in MCQs where they make the waveform and ask you which one, which option is correct. So very easy question. Let's move on to the next one. So this is a general revision type of question. So there are diode mentioned. Three questions are there. You have to tell diode is O and O for it is in breakdown. And then you need to find the value of V naught. So let's take this question. This is an open circuit here, right? This is an open circuit. 5 volt is connected here. What do you think in what region diode is working? What is the value of V naught? First tell me, what is the value of V naught? Can you comment the value of V naught? You can't. What you can say? You can say 0 volt will be here. But this node is open-ended. If you have studied network analysis from me, I have given the concept of open-ended. What do you mean by open-ended? It is not connected to anything. It is not connected to ground. Let's just assume this is a circuit. Okay. This is 5 volt. This is 0. What is the potential of this point? 0 volt. Although there is a resistance connected here. So what will be the potential of this point? You won't call it open ended. Why so? Because in the resistance there will be 0 current. So the, this potential will simply be 5 volt only. But in case of diode. Or what I can say. Let's make it something like this. This is some circuit, okay. This is 5 volt. This is resistance R. What do we know? There is zero current here, right? So this potential will be 5 volt. This is grounded. So this potential will be 0 volt. Tell me what will be the potential of this point? Can you tell potential of these two points? One thing I can certainly tell that pot potential of these two points will be same because they are shorted. Potential of these two points, let's assume this is A, this is B, then VA will be equals to VB. But what is the value that you can't tell? Because they are open ended, not connected to anything. Now, in the same way, what is happening? The circuit is open circuited. The circuit is open circuited. That means diode will conduct zero current. The diode will conduct zero current. Diode will conduct zero current. That means diode is off. 
right because it is open ended it is open ended so what is happening this is 5 volt this will be open circuited diode will be open circuited this is v not and this here is grounded so can you tell the value of v not so v not value we can't define no one will say it is zero we can't define that's the correct answer can't define v not voltage understood can't define let's try solving this question we will take it to the next page look now this kind of question will come in front of you a lot of time where a diode is there and a generator is there in these kind of questions what you need to do you have to consider the condition of the diode diode is there and generator diode is there now we don't know whether the diode will be on or off first we will consider it to be on only what do i see here at p side i see five potential and at n side i can't comment what is the potential but at p side i see five five volt so what i would do i would consider diode d1 to be on and on d2 i will apply open circuit test let's assume i try to apply open circuit test on both of the diode if i think of applying open circuit test on both of the diode what will happen this will be open circuited this will also be open circuited and this is a resistance r i know the potential of this point that will be zero i know the potential of this point that will be 5 volt do i know the potential of this point no now i can't comment anything i try to apply open circuit test on both of the diode i know the potential of this point 5 volt i know zero but between two nodes i don't know anything so can i say that potential of p is greater than any here can i say that with surety i can't say that right because i don't even know the potential so i have to assume i have to assume something so i am assuming the diode d1 is on so what i it feels like that p is having more potential 5 volt so i am assuming diode d1 to be on assume d1 is on and apply open circuit test apply open circuit test on d2 so d1 to be on then it will be shorted now after that we will check if it is actually on or not and now i am applying open circuit test on d2 this is r this is v not we can say and this is d2 so in d2 this is n this is p at n side you are having 5 volt at p side you are having 0 volt that means it goes into reverse bias but since this is jener and you require only 4 volt and here you are having in reverse bias you are having 5 volt in jener you require only 4 volt in reverse bias but you are having 5 volt that means it will go into breakdown right so it will go into breakdown so what will happen if it goes into breakdown how will the circuit look like this was 5 volt i consider diode to be on okay i consider d1 to be on and this will be okay let's uh, let's take the circuit again that this time i am making d1 as d1 only okay this d1 as d1 only this is 5 volt now i got to know that this is 4 volt and this is resistance r now apply the open circuit test on d1 apply open circuit test on d1 what will happen 0 4 5 and 4 d1 is also on what did i do first i considered d1 to be on then i checked what is happening with d2 then i got to know that d2 is in reverse bias and in breakdown that means d2 will be replaced with the battery of 4 volt then i checked what was my assumption that d1 is on then i am checking my assumption how i am checking my assumption by applying open circuit test on d1 then i got to know that my assumption was correct here i can see by applying open circuit test you can apply short circuit test as well if you short it then 5 minus 4 that means 1 by r 1 by r current will be flowing in this direction right so you can apply short circuit test as well so by applying short circuit or open circuit test on d1 I can see that diode D1 is on. That means assumption correct. Was 
करेक्ट तो बेसिकली वॉट विल एपन डायोड डी वन विल बी ओन दैट मीन्स इट विल बी शोटेड दिस विल बी रिप्लेस विद अ बैटरी दैट इज अ फोर वोल्ट दिस विल बी वी नोट एंड दिस विल बी योर रेजिस्टेंस आर सो बेसिकली वॉट विल बी योर वी नोट वी नोट विल बी फाइव माइनस फोर दैट मीन्स वन वोल्ट वेल एंड गुड दिस विल बी योर आंसर एक्चुअली यू वुड बी एबल टू सोल्व दिस काइंड ऑफ प्रॉब्लम वेरी क्विकली इन द एग्जामिनेशन वॉट यू विल सी ओके फाइव वोल्ट shorted and then this will be replaced with the battery of 4 volt right assumption is correct you won't need to do these kind of things just i am explaining it for the first time that's why i am writing all this thing within 10 seconds you will be able to see if this diode is on or off right let's take the next circuit that we are having for that i need to add a page now after this analysis try doing this on your own and tell me what will be the condition of d1 and d2 and what should be the value of v not in this question what was asked yeah v not was here so v not can't define yeah okay well and good let's take this question and you tell me are yaar yeah try this and tell me what will be the value of v not okay what do as initial assumption what do i think i can think diode d1 to be on assumption assume d1 is on if i assume this thing what will happen this is 5 volt here d1 is on i am applying open circuit test on d2 this is resistance r this is v not that we don't care much this is on this is n this is p what you are having for diode d2 you are having 5 volt in reverse bias For diode D2, you are having five volt in reverse bias, but it will not go into breakdown. Why? Because for breakdown you need six volt. In reverse bias, for D2 you are having for D2 in reverse bias you are having five volt, but it will no it will not go into breakdown because breakdown voltage is six volt. So D2 is reverse biased and not in breakdown. Not in breakdown. That means diode d2 is off that means d2 is open circuited and if d2 is open circuited that means the current here will be zero and if current in the diode d1 is zero that means it will also be open circuited right are you getting my point the d2 is open circuited so what will happen this will be the condition This is five volt. So what is happening? If D two is open circuited, that means the current here will be zero. That means di diode D one will also be off. This becomes as th as the same condition of this. Exactly the same circuit we can see here, right? Exactly the same. So diode will also be off. D one will also be off, right? So what will be the V not value? V not value will certainly be zero because here zero ampere current is flowing. V not value will be zero. If they had if they had asked the potential of this point, then what you would say? I can't comment. You will not say what is. Uh, it will be five volt. Now you will say I can't comment, right? Because D one is open circuited now, right? So D one will be off. V not is zero volt. That's it. I hope you are understanding the concept because these kind of circuits are used. a lot of times in the circuit and many of the student don't have any idea how uh, whether it will be diode gen will go into breakdown or not many of the students i have seen a lot of students even the toppers who don't even have the idea whether it will go in gen in breakdown region or not but now you have very clear idea so when it is used in the circuit you will be able to understand very quickly so we will see the circuits where it is used before that let's do one revision question the similar kind of question we have solved just to revise you what do you do in these kind of questions This is five volt. Two diodes are there. Apply open circuit test on both of them, on both of the diodes, right? This is resistance R. This is four volt. So what will happen? Zero volt will come here. This is P. This is N. This is P. This is N. This is having four volt, right? And this is having five volt. The one who is having more forward bias voltage that will be turned on first. 
the one who is having more forward by forward by voltage we have studied it in initial lectures only the one who is having more forward by voltage that will be turned on first so who is having more forward by voltage d1 is having more forward by voltage so it will be turned on first and based on that after whatever circuit we get we can define the region of operation for d2 first d d1 will be turned on right so d1 will be turned on d1 will be turned on initially so now what d1 will say d1 will say i am having more potential so now i am the boss who is i am having more forward bias potential i am the boss so now i will decide whether d2 will be on or not so now d1 will decide how d1 will decide because d1 will be turned on initially so how the circuit will look like the circuit will look something like this this is resistance r this is 5 volt this is diode d2 and this is having forward again we are applying short circuit test here right again oh, sorry open circuit test very sorry open circuit test so this is n side and this is p side at p side this diode d2 is having 4 volt now and at n side diode d2 is having 5 volt so what d1 will say d1 will say d2 is not on what we did also this is just a revision question so what we did first we saw the working condition of d1 so and d2 both so it feels like both will be on but who is having more potential d1 is having more potential so d1 will say i am the boss so i will drive d2 now i will check the condition of d2 now so d1 will be turned on when we turn on d1 we got to know that here 5 here 4 that means d2 will be off d2 will be off these are the working condition this will be for d1 this will be for d2 and this will be d1 right revision question it was let's move on to this actual problem although this was asked in gate although everyone get the correct answer for this but they teach the wrong concept here what is the wrong concept that i will tell you they get the correct answer 90 percent of the student who studied analog electronics deeply or th those who have studied analog electronics from anyone they will get the correct answer here it will be vwx will be zero but there will be one wrong concept that i will tell you okay so let's check this out so what is our vyz vyz is 1000 sin omega t so what we can do v in greater than 0 v in less than 0 since there is see, normal diode connected no general diode is connected so there will be no breakaway there is no breaking point nothing like that so what we do we just check v in greater than 0 v in less than 0 that's it right in the first question there was general diode connected so we needed to check for 6 volt as well right but here no general normal diodes are connected so we will just check for v in greater than 0 v in less than 0 and we will see what is happening so let's check for v in greater than 0 i guess i can take it to the next page for v in greater than 0 right so what we will do we will apply open circuit test अरे यार बड़ा बेकार है पे नहीं 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 ऐसा नहीं बोलते <laughs> yeah so what was our vyz vyz was thousand sin omega t vyz was thousand sin omega t thousand sin omega t right now in this question tell me is there any ground mentioned in the whole circuit is there any ground mentioned no ground is mentioned so i can assume the ground as per me i can assume the ground anywhere that will be my ground so what i prefer i always prefer assuming the ground near the battery only so this i am assuming to be the ground since there is no ground mentioned i can assume the ground as per my convenience i always assume the ground near the battery only because that is the most convenient way so i am assuming the ground near the battery why so because here now i can define the potential very quickly if this is zero i can define this will be v in right this is our v in so this will be v in so p n n p this was our p this was our n this was our n this was our p 
n p p n this was n this was p this was p this was n right now we are applying open circuit test this potential is zero this potential will be what v n is greater than zero somewhat greater than zero this potential will be somewhat greater than zero somewhat greater than zero let's assume v n to be 500 okay i am assuming v n to be 500 as for now v n is greater than zero you can assume any value i am assuming it to be 500 so here 500 will come here also 500 will come so these two potential we have defined right what about this this potential will be zero p potential will be zero here also this potential will be zero because this is grounded we are applying open circuit test. this potential will be zero this potential will be zero can you tell me what will be the potential of this point this point this point and this point we can tell can we tell the exact value no we can't tell that one thing we can tell is that that this potential and this potential will certainly be same that's for sure that this potential and this potential certainly will be same because we are applying open circuit test and this complete potential will come here even if you are not applying open circuit test still it will be same and this potential and this potential will still be same because simply we are talking about this potential and this potential both are shorted so both potential will be the same for sure right both the potential will be the same for sure but we need to find the relation between this potential and this potential will both of them be same think about it and tell me yeah they will be the same because here there will be zero current the current will be zero tell me from where the current will come what one kilo ohm resistance is seeing what one kilo ohm resistance is watching he is watching that there is no path for current to flow this 100 sin omega t battery that is there that is not connected to 1 kilo ohm resistance anyhow is this battery 1000 sin omega t v in is connected to 1 kilo ohm or not it is not connected it is not connected anyhow right complete open circuit is there it is not connected so there is zero current so whatever the potential you are having here the same potential will be here right are you getting this point let's just call Let us call this as P1, this as P2, this as N3 and this as N4. So what you say that potential of Vn3 will be equal to potential of Vn4. That will be equal to potential of Vp1 and that will be equal to potential of Vp2. Right? This is what we got to know from open circuit test. And here one thing we got to know that if this is 0, this is 500. This is also 500, right? And now the most important part of the question will come. So, think very deeply now, okay? So, this is what we have seen. Now, tell me one thing. Can I say the diode D1, D2, D3, D4? All these diodes, this I am calling D1, this I am calling D2, and this was I am calling D3, and this I am calling D4. Now, can I say that D1, D2, D3, D4 will be off? Can I say that? What I am thinking that N is having 500, this N is having 500. So, this is very much higher potential at N. So, this will be off. Can I say that with surety? No, I can't say. Because I don't even know the potential of P1, P2, N3 and N4. So, you can't comment. Here, what people say that P is having zero voltage. Okay, it is very less. So, diode is off. Luckily, you got the correct answer. But let's check how we will actually analyze the circuit. Look, what I am thinking is, I am thinking that at N we are having 500 voltage. Here, by applying open circuit test, what we are having? 500 voltage. Here we are having 500 voltage. Here we are having 0. Here we are having 0. Let's assume if I say my D1 is on. I am assuming by my D1 is on. That I am assuming. That means whatever the potential that you have here, that will be higher than 500. Let's assume it is 550. So that same potential will come here, 550 will come here and when we were applying the open circuit test, what will happen? The same potential will come here and the same potential will come here. We are applying open circuit test and we think that this D1 can be on. So what will happen? 550, 550, 550, 550. All will have 550. D1 turns on, it will drive current in this direction. D2 turns on, it will drive the current in this direction. What happens with D3? D3 turns off. Here you are having, sorry, sorry, yeah, D3 turns off. This will not drive any current. This will also not drive any current. 
right d3 turns off and d4 also turns off right and now the most important part comes d1 is on d2 is on right d3 d4 are off now what is happening this is driving some current this is driving some current some current is going here and then some current is flowing in this one kilometer distance as well because this current that is being driven in d3 there will be no current in d4 there will be no current the same current will be flowing through this one kilometer distance and that current that is going here okay this is driving current in this direction one kilometer is having this current in, in this direction and as per this this should have current in this direction is that possible d2 is driving current in this direction d1 is driving current in this direction if d3 d4 are off that means this one kilometer resistance will have this current in this direction as per d1 current and as per d2 current this one kilo will have current in this direction is that possible let's assume current in this direction is 5 milliampere then the current in this direction will be minus 5 milliampere right and now what we are saying from p to n minus 5 milliampere current is flowing that means from n to p 5 milliampere current is flowing so that is not possible if you say that both d1 d2 are on then we got to know that one of d1 d2 will certainly be off right so if i am saying that d1 d2 are on that means d3 d4 are certainly on then i got to know that one of d1 d2 is certainly off and if one of them is off try thinking about it the other one will be also off why it will be also what will happen the complete circuit circuit will become open circuited what will happen let's assume d1 is on d2 is off so what will happen this will be the circuit d3 is already off this is w here okay and this is one kilo ohm resistance this is already off this is also 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 off this is how your circuit look like this is your d1 this is how your circuit looks like let's assume the current is flowing here okay it goes it goes it goes it goes it goes it goes now where it will go open circuit path is here so current will not even flow if current is not flowing that means d1 will also be off so that's why all the four transistors are all the four diodes are off not because this is having zero this is having 500 that's the reason that all transistors are off are you getting my point that was the most important point what did we see here first we checked that all are having the same potential this p1 n3 p2 n4 all are having the same potential we assumed that d1 is on so that will have some more potential than this then I got to know that if D1 is on and D2 is on, both are on, then D3, D4 will certainly be off. That means D1 will drive current in this direction, D2 will drive in this in this direction. But is that possible? No, it is not possible. What will happen? D2 will turn off. And then we got to know if D2 is turned off, that, that means D1 will certainly be turned off. So all the transistor D1, D, D2, D3, D4 are turned off. Now I, now I actually can't write it in words, but I hope you have go, understood the concept and you will remember it. So we will directly write in the theory that all these will be turned off okay so if you liked it do click on the like button it will give me motivation that i am teaching something good right so you can hit on like button this was d2 and this is d1 so by circuit analysis i am writing by circuit analysis we got to know d1 d2 d3 d4 all are off now what does what is the second mistake now now they say that if all are off that means here we will have zero volt and here also we will have zero volt so vwx is zero volt is that correct no vwx is zero volt but you don't know the potential of these points you still don't know the potential of these points what you can say that your vw is equals to vn3 and that is equals to vp1 and your v x is equals to vn4 that is equals to vp2 and if all diodes are off if all diodes are off are off then vn3 is equals to vp1 is equals to vn4 is equals to vp2 that means your vw is equals to vx right 
and if vw is equal to vx that means vwx is equal to 0 volt so if they say that your vw is 0 volt and your vx is 0 volt this is simply wrong this is what wrong both have the same potential what is the potential we don't know if they in the question if they had asked you what is vw and if there is an option 0 volt and if you click on that that will be wrong the answer will be cannot determine are you getting this point so vw vw is equals to vx that's why your vwx is 0 that's why they didn't they did not ask individual potential they just asked what is vwx vwx is 0 volt because both potential are 0 right this was the analysis for v in greater than 0 now think the same analysis for v in less than 0 okay try doing it on your own what will be the analysis for v in less than 0 for v in less than 0 so this is for v in less than 0 what do you think what will happen in this circuit this was our ground here we had the battery 1000 sin omega t in this analysis all diodes will be turned on did you do the analysis on your own if you did the analysis on your own you would realize v in is less than 0 that means some negative value will come let's assume here minus 500 comes here also minus 500 here it is 0 and here it is 0 right if this is minus 500 minus minus 500 0 0 right now if i am assuming let's assume the diode d1 is on i am assuming that the diode d1 is on so if diode d1 is on what will happen this potential will be somewhat less than minus 500 somewhat greater than minus 500 sorry because d the p potential should have more positive potential so let's assume it is minus 5 minus 450 the same potential will come here minus 450 and since we are applying open circuit test the same potential will come here the same potential will come here because of that what will happen this d1 turns on here 0 here minus 450 this d3 also turns on d2 minus 50 minus 500 minus 450 that means this will also turn on and this will also turn on 0 minus 450 all turns on if all turns on what what happens this this 0 this diode is on so this 0 will travel here right 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 will travel here and this diode is on so 0 0 0 0 0 will travel here that means this will have 0 ampere current right this will have 0 ampere current now this 0 will also travel here 0 0 0 like this and if this is on this will also be 0 and this 0 will travel here this will also be 0 so simply one current v in by 1k current will flow in this direction because v in is negative v in is negative so v in by 1k current will flow in this direction v in is negative so minus 500 milliampere current will flow in this direction in downward direction and that will be flowing in this diode in this direction and in this diode in this direction and if the current is flowing in this direction that means the current is flowing in this since no current is there in one kilo ohm resistance so the all the current will be coming from this diode so that current will flow follow this path and similarly in this one if the current is flowing like this that means the current will follow this path so all the current direction are clear right from d3 p to n d4 p to n d2 p to n and d1 p to n so if we assume the, the diode to be on it is actually following it following it up in the previous analysis it was not following it up so in the previous analysis all the diodes were off here all the diodes are on did you understand this point what we did we assumed minus 500 now we are assuming d1 to be on so minus 450 will come here all everywhere minus 450 will go what does it look like it, lo it looks like everyone should turn on so if everyone turns on then we show the direction of current then we go to know the direction of current is flowing from p to n in all the diodes that means all the diodes are on so here what happens d1 d2 d3 d4 all are on if all are on what is happening how does the circuit look like although now you can guess the answer of v vwx but still i will give you a few more points here that will help you a lot in circuit analysis answer we can get now but still let's check a few more points
Although this one kilo ohm resistance will have zero current only. This is our V in. This is one kilo ohm. This is W. This is X. Right? This is having zero ampere current here. If this is having zero ampere current, what does that mean? That V W is equal to V X. Right? Or from here also you can see all the diodes are on. So if this is V W, then this will certainly be V X. And because of that, it is having zero ampere current. Can you define the voltage of V W and V X? In the exam, they are asking what is V W and what is V X. Now you can say that, sir, here I assumed it to be grounded. So my V W is zero and V X is zero. So in the option, if you see V W is zero and V X is zero, will you tick on this? Think about it and tell me. Will that be correct? That V W is zero and V X is zero. No, that will be wrong. Why so? Because you assumed the ground here. Okay. You assume the ground here. Are you getting my point? But what if I had assumed the ground here? The working of the diode will not change. The D1, D2, D3, D4, if all are on, they will be on only. If I had assumed the ground here. Even if I had assumed the ground here, this will be 0 volt only. And this will be 0 volt only. Okay. What if I had assumed the ground here? If I had assumed the ground here, the working addition will not change. But now what will happen? This potential will be minus V in and this potential will be minus V in. So based on the assumption that you made, where is the ground, the potential can change. Although diode working condition will not change. If diode diodes are on, they will be on only. Assume ground here and find the working condition of diode. If they are on, assume anywhere the ground. Assume the ground anywhere in the complete circuit. These diode will be on only. But the potential of respective point can change. If I had assumed the ground here, that means this potential that I am writing minus 500, here I would have written 0 volt. So this is 0 and if I am applying open circuit test, this will be 0 volt for me. In applying open circuit test, in this circuit analysis, if I had assumed the ground here, what I would have done? In open circuit analysis, this will be 0 and this will be some negative potential. Then I, got, then I would have got to know that my diodes are on only. But then my VW potential would have been VW potential would have been minus VI, minus VI. This is 0 and this is VI. So it would be minus VI and VX would also be minus VI. But we know one thing that both potential will be equal to same. Both potential will be the same. But it's not necessary that both potential will be 0 because we just assumed the ground. Are you getting this point? So it's not necessary that VW and VX would be 0. So I am not writing that just a simple point in the exam if they ask that VW and VX are equal or not. So they are not equal. So they, they are equal, but they are not equal to 0, right? So V W and V X are equal. So V W V W X is equal to 0 volt. Right? So this is the answer that V W X is always 0 volt. Okay. Now, so V W X is always 0 volt. That is that is the answer, right? So now one thing in this question, if they had asked you what is the current in this diode. What you would say? 0 ampere because diodes are open circuited, right? The current in the diodes are 0 ampere in any, any diode if they are asked in this diode, in this diode, in this diode or in this diode. The current will be 0 ampere. Now what I am saying, I am saying that let us assume the current I is flowing here. I am saying that the current I is flowing here. Tell me what will be the current in this diode and what will be the current in this diode. That means I am asking you what will be the value of, okay, I current will be flowing in opposite direction actually because V in is negative here. So, I current will be flowing in this direction. So, tell me what will be the current in this diode and in this diode. Tell me the value. It will be I only or I by 2 or I by 3, I by 4, I by 5. What it will be? I value we can get to know that I value will be V in milliampere. V in by 1 milliampere. That will be your I. This I value will be V in by 1 kilo ohm. That means V in milliampere will be the current. Tell me what will be the value of the current in these diodes. Let us just ask you one interesting question. This is the battery V in. Okay. This is 1 kilo ohm resistance. Let us assume. These two are short circuited. 
and uh, this is the ground I am having. Okay, short circuit path are there. This is one kilo ohm. I am assuming V into B five volt. Tell me what will be the current I one? What will be the current I two? Can you tell me the values? Look, this is grounded. So zero will come here. Zero will be here. So from here I am having five milliampere current. Now you will say that sir, short circuit path is there, so the same current will flow. So I1 will also have 5 milliampere and I2 will also have 5 milliampere. No, they will not have 5 milliampere. Let's assume if this is 5 milliampere and this is 5 milliampere. So 5 plus 5 combined should be 10, right? So even if there is zero resistance path, still the current will be divided. I1 will be 2.5 milliampere, and that will be equal to I2. Are you getting this point? Although it's not possible to make ideal wire, although a wire will have some resistance, so the current will be divided in the inverse proportion of the resistance. Let's assume I1 is having R1 resistance, this wire is having R1 resistance, and this wire is having R2 resistance. So current would have been divided in that, that part. But if we are taking the ideal case, that both wire are completely identical, then the current will simply be divided. And the, the same thing will be happening here. The same I current is flowing here, here I by 2, and here I by 2. So, if they had asked you the diode current at a particular voltage, then you would have replied that but like that, that the current will be half, not the complete. So, this was the complete analysis of the question. There was plenty of plenty of wrong things and plenty of correct things as well. Now, I have given the complete analysis, what is correct, what is wrong. So, now I guess you have must have understood the complete concept behind this question, right? So, you can check it out, you can check it once again. So, I took around 30 minutes, I guess, in this question, but I needed to take it so that you all the concept will be clear to you, right? So, this is my final analysis, okay? This I can write as note. This I can write as note. Okay, let's move on to next question. We will solve this question and the rest of the question we will, will be solving in the next video actually because this video will be very long if I keep on solving. For JNR, VZ value is given 6.8 volt. For old diodes, V gamma is 0 0.7 volt. For old diodes, V gamma is 0 0.7 volt. V in is 10 sin, uh, 10 sin 100 omega t. Then find the maximum and minimum value of V naught. Try doing it on, on your own. This circuit we have already so, solved, right? Diode and a JNR in series. So what do you think? When V in is greater than 0, when what we are applying, we are applying open circuit as now, but we will not draw the circuit again and again, right? When V in is greater than 0, what will happen? V in will come here because open circuit test we are applying. So the resistance R will have 0 current, V will come here. If it is greater than 0, diode D2 will be off. That's it. Diode D2 is off. Diode D2 is off. That's for sure. If V in is greater than 0, what do you think? D1 will turn on very quickly. No, at least you know that it will require at least 0 0.7 volt. But let's try at 0 0.7 volt. If V in is 0 0.7 volt, and let's assume D1 is on. If D1 is on, what will happen? It will be replaced with a battery of 0 0.7 volt. So what will come here? 0 volt will come here. This is 0, this is 0. This is in. We can't comment if this is forward bias or reverse bias. Even if it is forward bias, this will be shorted only. Right? So V naught will be 0 only. What I am saying, I am assuming, what I am saying, I am assuming D1 to be turned on. If this is 0 0.7 volt, what will happen? This 0 0.7 volt, this diode will be on. So, this will be 0 volt. Here also it is 0 volt. Now, I can't say if it is forward bias or reverse bias, right? So, if I can't tell if it is forward bias or reverse bias, let's not make a comment, okay? Let's make it somewhat greater than 0 0.7 volt. Let's make it 0 0.8 volt. If it is 0 0.8 volt, what will happen? This will be replaced with the battery of 0 0.7 volt, what will come here? 0 0.1 volt. N is having 0 0.1 volt, P is having 0 volt. What will happen? It will go into reverse bias. Will it go into breakdown region? No, it will not go into breakdown region. Why so? Because it is already have on, only having 0 0.1 volt. It needs actually 6.8 volt, right? So for 0 0.8 volt, also it is turned off. What do you think? How much voltage we need to turn this complete on? At 0 0.8, what happened? This is 0 0.1. That means it is turned off. That means this is open circuited. And if this is open circuited, the diode even is connected in series. So it can't drive any current. So this will also be open circuited. So D1 will also be off. Right? 
so tell me at what potential what do you think that uh, this diode degenerate dz will turn on what do you think 6.8 plus 0.7 7.5 if v in is 7.5 volt what will happen this will be replaced with a 0.7 volt battery this will be 6.8 so you at least need 6.8 volt here if you are getting 6.8 volt here 6.8 volt here this will be replaced with a battery of 6.8 right and this is a, this is replaced with a battery of 6.8 and this is a gen, this is a simple battery of 0.7 so 6.8 plus 0.7 this will be 7.5 right so till v in is less than 7.5 v in is less than 7.5 volt diode d2 is of diode d2 d1 and dz are off so if they are off all are off that means v0 will simply be equals to v in only right so v0 is simply equals to v in Now let's take the next one that is when v in is less so v naught is is equals to v in now take when v in is greater than 7.5 volt this is the second condition when v in is greater than 7.5 volt you can take anything let's assume v in is 7.6 volt we are again applying open circuit test this is 7.6 volt this is a diode so 7.6 this will be replaced with a battery of 0 0.7 that means how much voltage will come here 6.9 that means this battery will turn on sorry this generator will turn on so if generator turns on then it will be replaced with the battery so dz and d1 turns on d2 is off so if d1 and dz turns on what will happen d1 will be replaced with a battery of 0.7 volt and dz will be replaced with a battery of 6.8 volt and this is grounded this is 6.8 volt and this is your v naught so what will be your v naught 6.8 is fixed 6.8 is fixed because it is jener so it will give a fixed voltage also the diode is on so it will also give a fixed voltage that is 0.7 volt so 6.8 plus 0.7 that means 7.5 volt so it will always be 7.5 volt so that is the maximum value that you can get this is the maximum we will also draw the transfer characteristics okay this question we can also draw the transfer characteristics but for v in greater than 0 we have done, done the analysis that is for v in greater than 0 and v in less than 7.5 what is happening v naught is equals to v in and for v in greater than 7.5 v naught is equals to 7.5 right and let's uh, do the analysis for v in less than 0 for v in less than 0 for v in less than 0 and v in less than minus and greater than minus 0.7 less than 0 and greater than minus 0.7 here i should write and here also i should write and and greater than minus 0.7 volt so if it is less than 0 this will be off only right even if it turns on let's assume this is minus 0.3 volt it is less than 0 let's assume it turns on so what will happen how much voltage will come here 0 0.4 volt will it turn on this device no because n will have a positive potential so it will be off only right and mm, there is no chance that it will go into breakdown because you are already applying negative voltage if you are already applying negative voltage how much positive will come here if you keep on applying let's assume you are applying minus 2 so if you are applying minus 2 what will come here minus 2 plus 0.7 it will be minus 0.3 you are keep on you will keep on applying negative potential if you keep on applying negative potential what max can happen so what max can happen that this jena turns on you think that this jena diode will turn on not in the breakdown region only in the forward device region if it if it turns on in forward device, forward device region what will happen this will be replaced with the battery of 0.7 volt and this will be replaced with the battery of 0.7 volt so here 0 volt will come but this will not happen because at minus 2 volt this diode will be turned on already so when v in is greater than 0 0.7 volt when v in is sorry when v in is less than 0 0.7 volt d2 will turn on when v in is less than 0 0.7 volt d2 will turn on by its own right 
सो वी आर चेकिंग फॉर जीरो टू वी आर चेकिंग बेसिकली वी आर चेकिंग फ्रॉम माइनस जीरो पॉइंट सेवन टिल जीरो दिस इज वॉट वी आर चेकिंग माइनस जीरो पॉइंट सेवन टू जीरो सो एट दैट टाइम डी वन डी जेड एंड डी टू ओल विल बी टर्न ऑफ यू कैन चेक ओल विल बी टर्न ऑफ फ्रॉम जीरो माइनस जीरो पॉइंट सेवन टू जीरो डी वन डी जेड एंड डी टू ओल विल बी टर्न ऑफ सो डी वन डी टू एंड डी जेड आर ओफ एंड इफ ऑल ऑफ देम आर ओफ दैट मीन्स वी नॉट इज इक्वल टू वी एंड वैन वीन इज लेस देन माइनस पॉइंट सेवन वोल्ट एट दैट टाइम माइनस पॉइंट सेवन वोल्ट At that time, what will happen? This diode D2 will turn on. If it is less than minus 0.7, diode D2 will turn on. Diode D2 turns turns on. And if diode D2 turns on, what will happen? This will be replaced with the battery of which is grounded. This is this will be replaced with the battery of 0.7 volt, and this is your V naught. So V naught will be minus 0.7 volt. That is fixed. So basically, that's the minimum value, and that is the maximum value. So can you draw the transfer characteristics? Yeah, we can certainly draw. This is V naught. This is V in. What was the break-in point here? That was seven point five volt, and here it was zero point seven volt. So between these two points, V naught is equal to V in. Between these two points, V naught is equal to V in. After that, here it is constant to seven point five volt only, and here it is constant to minus zero point seven volt. Right? So we have drawn the transfer characteristic as well. Right? Well and good. Understood this question? Right? Let's move on to the next one. Okay. we can solve this one as well okay only this this one will be last in the next lecture we can start solving from here okay so let's solve this one so we have to find the voltage v not options are given three options are given so what do we, what you will do we will apply open circuit test for this diode let's assume this diode is d okay so we will apply open circuit test whether the diode will be on or off if diode turns on what will be v not If diode is on, V not will be V in only. If diode is on, V not will be equal to V in, right? Because if it is on, this will be zero volt, and this will be V in. So V not is V in only. And if diode turns on, what will be V not? Tell me. If diode turns off, what will be V not? If diode turns off, that means this one milliampere current will be flowing here. V not will be one volt. Now people will say, sir, if it is on, why this one milliampere current is not flowing here? Because if it is on, this will be shorted. That means the one milliampere current will flow through this short circuit path, not through the one ohm resistance. So that's why we have to check the condition of diode. Diode is on or off. So we will check one by one. So let's apply open circuit test. Open circuit test. This is one ohm. This is V naught. This is V in. This is diode, which is open circuited. This is 10 ohm. This is 1 ampere. Right. Now this 1 ampere current is flowing here. The same 1 ampere current is flowing here. Let's assume this potential is V D. 
ఓపెన్ సర్క్యూట్ పోటించాలి విడి విడి ఓపెన్ సర్క్యూట్ ఐ కెన్ రైట్ వాట్ విల్ బి విడి ఓపెన్ సర్క్యూట్ వి ఇన్ మైనస్ వన్ వోల్ట్ రైట్ వి ఇన్ మైనస్ వన్ వోల్ట్ సిన్స్ వీఆర్ కన్సిడరింగ్ దిస్ ఓపెన్ సర్క్యూట్ దట్ మీన్స్ వన్ మిలియన్ ఎంపే కరెంట్ వన్ ఎంపేర్ కరెంట్ విల్ బి ఫ్లోయింగ్ హియర్ సో వి ఇన్ మైనస్ వన్ వోల్ట్ దట్ విల్ దట్ విల్ బి యోర్ విడి నవ్ వాట్ డూ యూ సి ఇఫ్ వీన్ ఈజ్ లెస్ దెన్ వన్ వోల్ట్ ఇఫ్ వీన్ ఈజ్ లెస్ దెన్ వన్ వోల్ట్ దట్ మీన్స్ విడి ఓపెన్ సర్క్యూట్ విల్ బి నెగటివ్ అండ్ ఇఫ్ వి విడి ఓపెన్ సర్క్యూట్ ఈజ్ నెగటివ్ దట్ మీన్స్ డయోడ్ విల్ బి ఓన్ అండ్ ఇఫ్ డయోడ్ ఈజ్ ఓన్ టైల్ మీ వాట్ విల్ బి ద పొటెన్షియల్ ఆఫ్ వి నోట్ దట్ విల్ బి ఈక్వల్స్ టు వి నోట్ ఐ ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ యూ రైట్ ఇఫ్ డయోడ్ ఈజ్ ఓన్ దిస్ పొటెన్షియల్ విల్ బి జీరో దిస్ పొటెన్షియల్ విల్ బి వి ఇన్ సో వి వి నోట్ ఈజ్ ఈక్వల్స్ టు వి ఇన్ వి నోట్ ఈజ్ ఈక్వల్స్ టు వి ఇన్ సో సింప్లీ వాట్ ఈస్ ద కంక్లూజన్ దట్ ఇఫ్ వి ఇన్ ఈజ్ లెస్ దెన్ వన్ వోల్ట్ దెన్ v not is equals to v in this is the conclusion this is the conclusion this is the first conclusion what will be the second one the second one i can write on next page if v in is if v in is greater than 1 volt if v in is greater than 1 volt so if v in is greater than 1 volt this vn is greater than 1 volt that means vd open circuit will be vd open circuit will be positive if vd open circuit is positive that means what will happen diode will turn off diode turns off and if diode turns off what will happen if diode turns off what will happen v not will be equals to 1 ampere 1 volt only because this 1 ampere will be flowing here if this is off that means this 1 ampere will be flowing here so v not will be 1 volt only right diode turns off so v not will be 1 ohm into 1 ampere that will be 1 volt right so what is the conclusion we are getting here that if v in is greater than 1 volt then v not is 1 volt and if v in is less than 1 volt then v not is equals to v in these are our final conclusion now we have to check the options option option 1 what was the option 1 that v not is minimum of v in and 1 this was the first option v not is minimum of v in and 1 if i am writing minimum of 0.5 and 1 what will be the answer minimum of 0.5 and 1 0.5 minimum of 2 and 1 what will be the answer 1 i hope you know this right minimum of 2 and 1 will be 1 minimum of 0.5 and 1 will be 0.5 let's assume let uh, your v in is 0.5 if v in is 0.5 what will be the actual answer as per us that will be equals to 0.5 only if v in is 0.5 that means v in is less than 1 that means v not will be equals to 0.5 only right and from here what do you get v not will be equals to minimum of 0.5 this answer we got from here right that if v in is 0.5 volt that means v in is less than 1 that means v not will be equals to v in only that means v not will be equals to 0.5 volt only and from here what do you get 0.5 and 1 minimum of 0.51 that is 0.5 volt only both answer as both answers are matching yes that means this can be one of the possible option let's check let v in is 2 volt if v in is 2 volt what do you get v not will be what if v in is 2 volt that means v in is greater than 1 volt v not will be 1 volt only let's check from here let's check from here this for this we got from here right that v not will be 1 volt only because if v in is greater than 1 volt we v not will be 1 volt only let's check from here v not is equals to minimum of this is 0.5 and 1 so minimum of v in and 1 so 2 and 1 what is the minimum of 2 and 1 that is 1 volt only both answer are matching yes the, this option is correct only here this and this are matched and here this and this are matched 
so basically this option is correct so our v naught is minimum of v in and 1 that is the final answer well and good very easy question i hope you have understood it right it was crystal clear to you right so we have solved this four or five five question i guess this was also a very good question actually this was the best one here you got to know a lot of things this took actually time as well so here we got to know the working condition of diodes and all these things and this was the demo question so that you could understand the next problems very quickly so you will be able to understand next problems very quickly if you understood the concept here then this was the very simple general diode question and this was also a conceptual question where you needed to find the value of v naught so this was the first part of, of our assignment in the next part we will see a few more questions right so we will meet in the next video so if you found the content helpful please consider sharing it or liking it thank you